I know I'm taking my life in my hands here by making some comment on the Scotland game uh, very recently, which, of course, everyone was watching and everyone felt hugely disappointed at the end. I, I feel very sorry for the Scotland players and the coach because the expectations were just unbelievable. You see people talking about taking the day off work. Kids were staying in at school to watch. And indeed, uh, Amy MacDonald got a lot of retweets for uh, commenting, I love that all the Waynes are watching this in school, uh, the sort of crushing disappointment that sets you up for life. Now, I know that was really tongue in cheek because uh, the TikTok video that Amy did, Sing in Flower of Scotland, was part of uh, the, the huge stirring emotions that people brought to that match. But I wonder if, if we are putting too many emotional eggs in one basket when it comes to football. <clears throat> Not because we are inevitably rubbish, because actually we've qualified for these uh, Euro finals in a way that many other small countries that have done very well, like Iceland in the past, they didn't get there. Let's look for a minute at the teams that are not there, the little teams. Um, Norway, Iceland, Ireland. Now, Norway, they don't generally qualify for very much football-wise because they're spending their winter months, generally speaking, doing a whole variety of winter sports. It's the Winter Olympics that they excel at. That's their own thing. Um, when it comes to football, their football stadiums are, 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 are actually sports arenas for a whole multitude of different sports so that uh, young women, that families can get involved in all sorts of different things as well as football. And actually, the Norwegians would never dream of spending their weekends spectating. So maybe that's something for us to consider. Let's look at Ireland. I mean, Ireland, really interesting that for the first time last year, uh, the Gaelic Association, Athletics Association Sports, that's Ireland's own indigenous sports, um, were more popular than football for the first time in however long. And when you look down to what that is, well, actually, the GAA was set up in 1884, so way back. And it was actually very much part of Ireland's bid for, for independence. Um, they've got hurling, which is kind of, this is so badly abbreviated, I know I'll get shot down, but hurling, which is a kind of hockey, Gaelic, Gaelic football, which uses the hand and feet, and there's ladies Gaelic football, which is the fastest growing sport in Europe, um, head handball, which is a ball and wall game, so not quite what you'd think, rounders, which is like baseball, but the Irish are keen to stress they were there first and baseball developed from theirs, and camogie, which is a woman's form of hurley, which is the one that's like hockey. These are majority sports. Uh, there was a survey in Ireland taken uh, two or three years ago asking people what they were most looking forward to. And the GAA sporting finals were the number one most anticipated event before the Euro qualifiers. So there's maybe something there for us too. And then there's Iceland. Uh, dear Iceland that managed to actually beat England in the last uh, Euro finals, which was quite something for a nation of 355,000 people. Um, obviously, they managed to qualify as well for the World Cup. Uh, it, it's extraordinary, utterly extraordinary how well they've done. It is the product of many things, but particularly of taking youth development really seriously. 25 years ago, the Icelanders had some of the worst behaving teenagers in the Northern Hemisphere, and that's saying something. They did some, some work and discovered that the ones who were most likely to go off the rails were the ones who had least contact with organized sports of any kind. So even with the recession, with uh, near bankruptcy in 2008, they instituted a program so that every kid has got access to a sport of their choice. It doesn't have to be football, and in the majority of cases, it isn't. But that has built up all sorts of bonuses for Iceland well beyond uh, their sporting prowess. It's changed the nature of their teenage behaviour completely. Um, they had, uh, oof, they had uh, in, in 1998, 42% of their 15-year-olds had been drunk in the previous month, 42%. In 2016, that was down to 5%. They've got that kind of good drop in all sorts of difficult behaviours, and it's because they got themselves organised to make sport more than just winning one tournament in football. 
So look, I'm not saying that I'm not going to be on the edge of my seat uh, when Scotland's playing England. And actually, in a funny kind of way, Scotland seems to relish being the underdog so strongly that we're now in a position we're more familiar with than otherwise. But I don't want our kids to learn simply the, the, the lessons of, of not having too high expectations of one national team in one game. I'd love us to start looking at the little nations around us and perhaps beginning to kind of get more eggs in the basket, recognising already that we do so well in these sports that we just somehow don't take us seriously. And perhaps lowering the pressure on the guys that are in this football team, because after all, they're only human.